Hello everybody. Well, this year I bought my Christmas present early. I did so because I wanted what I wanted for my drive back out west next month. And I've really always wanted one of these since I was a kid. Really have. And so finally I have one. What did I buy? I bought this. This is the GQ GMC 320 Plus Geiger counter. Or as they say it, personal, no, nuclear radiation detector. <laughs> I've always wanted a Geiger counter. Uh, ever since I was young, I was just fascinated by them and by radiation. And the ability to measure and detect radiation was just an intriguing thing for me. So I set out to buy one and I had some criteria that I needed to meet. First and foremost was price. I needed it to be under $100. All I could really afford, and that's kind of a stretch. So uh, that kind of limited my choices. Uh, secondly, it had to be based on a Geiger Mueller tube. It had to use the tube. It had, that, that's important for detection of the uh, types of radiation that you know I'm interested in, uh, sensitivity, and uh, hopefully accuracy, which was another criteria. It needed to be not the lowest level um, options, but you know, mid to lower mid range, something that was you know going to be somewhat accurate and useful. Um, third, I wanted it to be able to log data independently, so that it could log um, what it was reading over time. Uh, my thoughts being, while I'm driving uh, out west, I'm interested in the ambient radiation levels along the route. Uh, so yeah, that, and you know, when I'm out west, I'm going to be hunting for hot rocks and things. And uh, it'd be nice to be able to have it be logging the data as I'm taking a walk so I could make note of a time and location in my notebook uh, and have, you know, a more accurate look at the data later on as far as where I was and, and all of that. Uh, interfaceability with a computer, uh, hopefully for pulling that log data back off. Um, and uh, an onboard battery that's going to give it a decent life, preferably rechargeable. Well, the uh, GMC 320 Plus meets all of those criteria. Uh, it, it, it has a small Geiger Mueller tube in the base here where these, uh, where these gaps are. So the sensitive part of the counter is the bottom of it. Um, it has an internal real-time clock and uh, data logging. It's uh, configurable. It can save the uh, data every minute, every two minutes or so on. I think by default it saves the data every minute. So once a minute it writes a little log entry in there as far as date and time and, and what the counts per minute reading was. It also has a temperature sensor. Um, not sure of the usability there, but uh, it's nice to have it. Uh, very configurable. Push buttons, uh, backlit screen, um, a motion sensor so that it... Uh, Oh, I got it turned off right now because I was filming, but it'll turn on the backlight when you uh, move it, you know. So if you had it sitting still and you went to look at it at night, pick it up, the light would come on and you could see the display. Um, it reads primarily counts per minute. Uh, it will also indicate um, millirad per hour. I'm not certain yet what it's calibrated at, so that energy reading may or may not be 100% accurate. If it was calibrated for a certain type or, or a certain element, a certain type of radiation, a different type of radiation coming into the tube um, might not give you a perfectly accurate energy reading. But counts per minute will always be accurate because that's basically counting how many ticks or how many you know, events the tube hits per minute. On the side, it has a USB port that is used for charging the internal battery, which is very nice for me because I have a USB hub that's tied into my solar uh, battery system here so I can charge this device off grid. Headphone jack, but it's not for headphones. It is a tick output. Every time this ticks when it picks up radiation, that, that ticks on that output. That's for interfacing to a computer if you write your own software. You could then monitor the audio connection, you know, the microphone input on your computer. This would be tied to and it would give you a very easy way of writing your own uh, software. Uh, the USB port um, also has a communications protocol. You can talk to the device with your own software. 
And I went to the GQ website to see what software was available for this device. And I was very pleasantly surprised to find down near the bottom of the list that they provide a document with the full communications protocol for talking to, this, to their Geiger counters over the USB port. They make it very easy for you to write your own software. And they encourage that too. They call this an open platform device, meaning that they publish as much information as necessary for programmers to pick up the ball and run with it and write their own software. Uh, GQ has official Windows software on this page, but scrolling down through the list, I found several other projects that were submitted by other authors. One of which particularly caught my eye was one called GQ Logger that's written in Python. It's multi-platform. It's supported under Linux, Windows, and Mac. So that was the solution that I focused on for, for my use. Uh, and it's actually quite a, quite a nice program. We'll look at it in a minute. So in order to really play around with this thing, I needed some radiation sources. The background radiation here uh, in the South Texas Gulf Coast where I'm at uh, averages around 12 counts per minute. It's pretty steady. I've had it running for days. And it's, it's pretty steady around 12 counts per minute. Um, they give you a nice little card with the unit that has a chart on the back of recommended uh, um, ranges on counts per minute. 0 to 50, or 5 to 50 is normal background, don't worry about it. 5 to 100, eh, there's something going on, you know, you might want to want, you might want to figure out what. Um, over 100 um, is a little worrisome, you know, and it goes right on up and, and, and gives you uh, a guideline, you know. So you can tell what you're looking at. You know, if you're reading so many counts per minute ambient, should I be worried? They tell you in the chart. Um, the range, uh, according to the manual, this will go up to 65,535 counts per minute. Hmm, that's a, an interesting number, isn't it? That's the upper limit on 8-bit binary, I believe. So anyway, a uh, very nice device, and I needed a radioactive uh, source. So what did I do? Well... I dug around in what I had first, and I found up in my cabinet this old antique green mixing bowl here that had kind of an iridescence to it. Um, and I thought, well, that could be interesting because I know that in the early 20th century, uranium oxide was used as pigment in a lot of ceramics and glassware. Uh, they didn't understand back then, perhaps, the, the level of danger of that material, or they underestimated the, de the level. And so it was used quite uh, broadly as, as pigment. Um, this green kind of has a, an iridescence to it, and I knew that there was one test you could do on the green items. You can hit them with a black light. Now, I have a little handheld black light here. You probably can't even see the, I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's definitely a black light. Uh, it makes my teeth glow, but you won't be able to see that in the light. <laughs> uh, one test you can do with the green things is you can hit them with a black light, and they light right up. Look at that. In fact, here's a clip where uh, I was playing around with that in the evening so I could get it nice and dark in here. Like, intensely. Let me turn off the lights. It's almost spooky. It's a weird neon green, too. It's not the same green as the bowl itself. Look at that thing. There's my hand. So you can see it. I bring the black light in real tight. You can really see it's the light, but if I pull it out, you can't even see my hand hardly. But look at that. So my green bowl um, looks like it might have some uranium oxide in it. Uh, I went ahead and put the counter in there, and sure enough, it did. Uh, the counter read up to around 200 counts per minute, so uh, much higher than background. Uh, not nearly dangerous at all, but definitely an indication that that green bowl is slightly radioactive. But I wanted something hotter, and I knew about the uh, ceramics, and I knew about a particular type of ceramic that's collectible and common. It's called Fiesta Ware. So I went looking for some. Now near me there's several sh uh, shops, little shops along a strip, and one of them was an antique store here, Grandma's Attic. 
and that looked like a good possibility. So I went inside and started looking around on the shelves, and sure enough, look what I found. Browsing around on the shelves, I saw this bright orange plate. Oh, that looks like Fiesta Wear. As you can see, we're sitting at background levels, about 11 to 15 counts per minute. Watch this. going to get up over 2,000. Here's another one. Seventeen hundred, eighteen hundred, two thousand. If that were ambient radiation level, we'd be contacting the government. <laughs> Coming up on, well, it looks like it's settling out around 4,750 or so, 4,700 counts per minute. So I have my uh, radioactive source, that Fiesta Ware. It's quite hot at the surface, uh, around 5,000 counts per minute. Uh, the energy reading on the uh, counter was uh, 3 millirad per hour. Now again, I don't know what it's calibrated for, for what you know element and what type of radiation, so I don't know if that's entirely accurate, but it's probably close. And that gives us a nice analog to compare um, to where people can relate to it. You might think, oh my gosh, I've got some of that Fiesta where I'm not going to touch that stuff ever again. Uh, it's, it's, it's okay. Um, a dental x-ray, which is something that most of us should be familiar with, will dose you with, on average, 9 millirad of radiation. Now, that's what I've seen on several sources. So, if the energy reading on my counter is accurate, at 3 millirad per hour, I'd have to leave my hand on the plate for three hours for my hand to get the same dose of energy and radiation that you would get from a dental x-ray. Uh, I wouldn't want to eat off the plate, though. Um, I'm not too worried about keeping it here in the RV. The radiation level falls off with distance, and it's a, it's a, a square. Uh, so for every doubling of distance you move away from a radioactive object's object, the energy falls off by a factor of four. And with that plate, when I get the counter more than about two feet away from it, I'm reading background again. So uh, I've got no worries with storing it here in the RV uh, or carrying it with me. Um, but I wouldn't want to eat off it. Uh, there's, you know, you, you could conceivably think that, that if you're scraping the plate with your fork and knife while you're cutting your food or whatever, you might be knocking off uh, really tiny particulates of that material, that ceramic, transferring it to the food and then ingesting it, you know, where it could become embedded in your stomach lining or your intestinal wall or, you know, stay within your body slowly and, and very tinily irradiating a tiny spot. You know, I mean, I, I wouldn't want to ingest any particulate matter off that plate, so I wouldn't eat off of Fiesta Ware, but I would have no problem with, if I collected it, putting it up in a cabinet, I wouldn't worry about it. You know, you'd, you, you'd have to... to stand there and lean against the stuff for a day, you know, before you'd get any appreciable dose of radiation. But it does make for a very nice hot source. So that's fascinating. I'm having a ball with this little counter. Um, let's go and take a look at the software, though. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention in this video was how you install the software uh, for Linux. Uh, some of these steps might also apply to Mac. In my case, I had to install several dependencies. But we'll go and we'll, we'll take, take a look at the software now. Okay, I have extracted the Geiger Log software, and if we look in the folder here, we see all of these different pieces of Python code. The main program is here, just simply called Geiger Log. Now, as it came unzipped, this was marked as executable, but if it doesn't want to run on your system, you might need to go to Properties for that file, go over here to Permissions, and make sure that this, Execute, allow executing file as a program is checked. That marks, marks the file as an executable file, and then the program will run. However, when I try to open it, you know, we get the normal dialog here asking us how we want to run this, if I just want to run it or I want to run it in a terminal. Oftentimes, the first time I run it, I will run it in a terminal to see any error messages. However, we'll miss them if we do it here, because this is going to close the terminal as soon as the program executes. Watch. Boom. 
So it didn't run and I couldn't see any error messages. So I do need to run it manually in a terminal to see why it won't run. It's probably missing a component or two that it needs and we'll have to install them. So I'll open a terminal with Control alt t and let me show you another uh, shortcut here. To get into this folder, I could do a bunch of CD commands and uh, work my way into it. Or I could just type CD space and drag this icon that represents the folder into the terminal window. And what Linux is going to do is it's going to drop in the full path for me. So I'll hit enter. Now I'm in that directory. And there's all of the contents. So if we run Geiger log manually here, we should see any error messages that it generates. Uh, of course, we have to spell it, right? <laughs> what did I do? Oh, EI, I inverted the E and the I. Okay, there's our error message, and it's an import me uh, error. It's missing that module, Pi Audio which is the... I usually use Synaptic Package Manager when I'm installing uh, modules or trying to get some software to run. I can use Synaptic Package Manager to search for things and find their real full name. Pi Audio. Python 3 Pi Audio. Ah, this is using Python 3. I selected the wrong one. Common mistake. I left it in there just in case you made the same mistake so you could see what I had to do. So this is this Geiger log is written in Python 3, so everything that we need to install has to be the Python 3 version. So let's install Python 3 Pi Audio. And it's done. We'll go back here to the terminal and we'll try to run it again. No module named Serial, so it also needs the Python Serial module. Okay, back here. Now that I've gone through the tedious part of installing all of the missing Python modules, the program will run. I've plugged in the Geiger counter to the, ser to the USB port on the computer, and I'm going to run the software. And there it is. Uh, it's fairly complex. I didn't expect quite this much functionality, honestly. Um, it's actually a little daunting at first glance. There's so many options. But I think the first thing we want to do is we want to go here to device. Yep, there we go, connect devices. Uh, this program supports quite a few counters. I don't think I have to set it for mine specifically. I think it will intelligently find it. Let's find out. Okay, failed to connect with Gamma Scout. Uh, oh, but it looks like it did connect. GMC. Okay, device GMC. I see this shows us the options that we have. Counts per minute, counts per second. That we can read from it. Alright. Well, now we're connected. I'm going to have to look at the manual to really start to learn how to use this program. It looks like we've got quite a lot we can do here. Um, get log, load database for logging, or create new one. I created this test log already. I'll open it. Uh, okay, I'll be appending new data to it. Fine. So this is the... I'll, I'll tell you here, I've actually already run the software and done a little logging. <laughs> um, I had to know a little bit about what I was doing before I recorded this, but anyway, that's the data that I've already logged. Uh, it's actually talking to the device in real time, and if I hit start log, it's going to start pulling data from it. And we will see this logging continuing over here. Now I'm going to give it something to, uh, to read. I'm going to grab the green bowl and we'll put the counter in the bowl. Leaning over so you can hear the ticking. Ah, and you can see that the log file, or the log is adjusting its uh, 
trending up there showing the spike. So this is kind of cool. You could have the Geiger counter hooked up to a computer and be logging your data in real time. While it's doing that, I'm going to go back to the folder. And we see here there is a user manual in a PDF. Let's take a look at that while the Geiger counter is being logged here. This is a very big manual, 86 pages. Uh, let's go up to the table of contents. We have an introduction to the uh, program, installing instructions, quick tour, running the program. Um, wow, a lot of functionality in this little Python program here. It looks like a pretty comprehensive uh, piece of software for working with your Geiger counter on Linux. So I'm going to explore it some more. Um, if you have one of these GMC devices, uh, this is definitely a great program to look at because it's going to run on Windows, Mac, or Linux. And it looks like it gives you a very uh, good set of features to work with the device. Uh, one function that I did want to comment on uh, with this software, which is actually what I wanted it for, and it uh, will be very useful when I go driving out west. If you are not actively uh, logging from the device in real time, but you would rather uh, download the log that the device maintains internally, because the, uh, the uh, 320 Plus records every minute internally what the reading is, and maintains a history of that. I'll be using that when I go driving out west so I can pull data from each leg of the drive and uh, see if I find any hot spots. Um, if you go up here to history and uh, go down here to GMC series which is the the counter that I have, get history from device, it will pull in the logged data that was stored within the Geiger counter itself which I have just done. It took a little while. It's, it's quite a lot of data. But then we can look over here at the graph and we can see that it's got date and time and information on events. So you can actually explore the data that you've pulled down and uh, you can see you know, what readings you had and what times and, and dates. And uh, right, like right in here, you can see this section right in here, these huge spikes up around 5,000 counts per minute. Those were the various times that I placed the counter on top of the red, orangish, sorry, orangish uh, Fiesta Ware plate. Uh, so you can see the peaks there. This peak over here was the first time that I put the counter in the bowl, the green bowl. And this peak over here would be where I just put the counter in the bowl just now as I was demoing the software. So you can actually pull that logged data out of your device if you're on a trip or you're walking around somewhere um, and you can then do whatever you need to do with that data, whatever you want, whatever processes you can do within this program. So very useful. So there you go. That's my new toy for my travels out west, the uh, GQ GMC 320 plus Geiger counter. It was about $89. Um, not too bad. You know, most people could probably afford that. And if anything, it's fun to play around with. Um, it might be interesting to go through your, your antiques in your house and, you know, and see what you have that's radioactive. It could be interesting for somebody that just likes to watch background radiation. If you plug in the USB port, it'll run off of the USB power, so you could put this thing up and leave it running 24-7. Uh, it actually has mounts on the back for screws, so you could mount it to a wall. Um, it has Wi-Fi. Uh, by the way, it can actually use your Wi-Fi connection and automatically upload its data to uh, a, we a website that maps uh, radiation. GQ has their own that this can upload to, and I'll show you, know, show you a shot of it here. Um, it shows all the readings that people have submitted across the country, you know, so it's, it's not 100% scientifically accurate, but it's interesting to watch, and you could contribute to it and expand the, the, you know, the, the points on the map that are monitored. 
it's it's a pretty versatile little device battery life on the rechargeable battery is supposed to be four to five hours which should be plenty for you know if you're going on a hike or you're going somewhere to hunt around for uh, radiation sources or if you're going to go explore an abandoned mine um, out west and you want to make sure you're not walking into a high pocket of radiation in there anywhere because there was some uranium mining going on in Arizona or New Mexico I think as well uh, so you know if, you, if it depends on your use but having a four to five hour battery life is pretty good and you could charge it off of a power pack like you'd charge a cell phone with too if you were out camping and you wanted to use it you know over time so a pretty versatile little machine um, you do want to be a little careful with it that uh, Geiger Mueller tube that's in there is a tube it's fragile I can hear when I when I move it around I can hear the sound of something metal in that tube vibrating or you know probably touching the edge of the glass envelope so it is a delicate tube you wouldn't want to drop it you know and you probably wouldn't want to subject it to a lot of high vibration but the tube is uh, mounted on a couple of clips held in place with zip ties and there's plenty of them on the market uh, the tube would probably be the highest failure potential failure item in this unit and easy enough to replace if you needed to I've even seen some videos on YouTube on how to replace that that Giger Mueller tube that's in there Giger did I say Giger this is an HR Giger Geiger Mueller tube <laughs> Anyway, I'm pretty happy with this little unit. You'll probably see some data from it in the future in a few videos, especially when I get back out west, if I find something interesting out there, a hot rock um, or a vein of uh, something, uranium or whatever. Uh, I do know from a previous um, comment over, I think, on the Facebook page, um, I, I was sent a video link from somebody who was actually in the area that I was at in Kingman. Where I was in Kingman, there's a mountain very close by that we would drive by on our way to town called Bull Mountain. And he was around the backside of Bull Mountain and found an old mine. And he found a yellowish brown vein that read over 8,000 counts per minute on his Geiger counter. So that was probably uranium ore. You know, I mean, it's, it's out there. So it'll be interesting for me to play with this thing as I, as I go around. Anyway, um, I hope you found that uh, interesting, perhaps useful. And we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.